Hi everyone. So today we're going to describe how you construct the molecular orbitals as well as the molecular orbital diagram of water. Um, as with all molecular orbital pictures, um, the first thing you need to do is to draw the Lewis dot structure of the compound. And of course, water here is H2O, uh, pictured over here to the right. The molecule then is, um, is sketched according to a valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And as a net result of that, water, of course, is in its typical um, bent geometry, which then puts it into the, into the C2V point group. And now if we assign the coordinate system according to that criteria, we put the molecule in the XZ plane uh, by convention, and then the C2 axis is actually the, uh, the Z axis, as you can you know, clearly see labeled. Once we have all of, this, all of this situated, the entire molecule obviously is in um, the XZ plane, which basically means the plane perpen the mirror plane perpendicular to that is in the YZ plane. So here, sigma V prime is in the YZ plane. With all of this being said now, we can use this information to construct the, uh, the symmetry adapted linear combinations of the uh, hydrogen-based 1S orbitals. Uh, so the outer atoms of, of those of that water molecule um, to generate the uh, the correct combinations of the group orbitals that we will do on the next slide. So we've already established waters in the C2V point group. We have its geometric structure laid out as, as shown. And then we have to now make um, reducible representations for the outer atoms. And then recall that if the atoms shift during the operation, the character is zero. If they remain in the same position, each of the characters is going to be one. So obviously, under the identity operation, um, both of the hydrogen atoms uh, stay fixed because it's the same as multiplying it by one. Under the C2 operation, as you can see, that will interconvert the two hydrogens. Um, so that gives you a character of zero. And of course, if we look at the, uh, the mirror plane that's in the molecular plane itself, um, that basically leaves the atoms unshifted. So with two unshifted atoms, the character is two. And then finally, if we um, apply a mirror plane um, in the mirror plane that is bisecting the molecule right down the middle of the oxygen atom, that leads us, of course, again, to a character of zero because much like the other operation in C2, um, the sigma V prime operation um, interchanges uh, the hydrogens. So then we're in the situation now where we sort of know that we can reduce that representation to its EREP components. And we've already covered this numerous times in class, so I'm not going to belabor the point here, um, but use tabular reduction um, as, a, as an alternative to using this formula to, to simplify the process. And when you do this, you can clearly see that you generate now a, um, to the two EREPs are A1 plus B1 which of course, A1 is totally symmetric. And then B1, as you can see there, um, has the same symmetry as the x-axis. So that will be convenient when we're looking at how to, how to do this later. So now if you visualize these, um, these group orbitals, so if we take the basis as effectively the 2s, or sorry, the, the 1s orbitals on the hydrogen, you can kind of clearly see that if I make them phase in this particular manner to say that that's positive uh, phasing, um, then negative phasing would be obviously when they're unfilled. And that's just what I'm showing here is that the totally symmetric combination has, uh, has A1 symmetry. 
and then the out of phase combination. And again, the, the way you shade this is irrelevant because when you generate these linear combinations, you can kind of choose arbitrarily which side is shaded um, in, in which phase. It really doesn't matter. So here in this particular case, we basically say that the subtractive combination gives you the B1 um, combination that's shown here. And that's obviously out of phase, but you can kind of see very clearly that that has the same symmetry as the as the x axis. So now, what the next step in this process is going to be is to figure out what atomic orbitals have symmetry matches to the uh, H two group orbitals that we constructed in this process. And very clearly, what winds up happening is you see the situation where you have now three different A1 combinations that we have to consider. And the, the interesting part about this, and you'll see this um, happening much later in, uh, in other examples that we do as the semester progresses, the um, S2 orbital on oxygen is actually very deep, which you'll see later. Um, but that basically is telling us that the energy match is not going to be sufficient enough to give us a significant bonding interaction. So you're going to see that that A1 interaction is effectively going to wind up being non-bonding. Then the next, um, the next combination here um, that you have to consider is going to be um, the 2PZ atomic orbital and oxygen matching up with the group orbital. That's um, the A1 group orbital from H2. And you can kind of see that that's going to end up resulting in, you know, you're going to get a bonding and an anti-bonding combination from that. And that's, again, just the additive and subtractive combinations of those, of those two components. 